Congratulations to Jennifer Yu on winning her second U.S. Women's Chess Championship. The first time was in 2019, where she dominated, scoring 10 out of 11 points. This time, it was filled with much more drama, but not that kind. Not the Hans Neiman and Magnus and Hikaru and all that junk. I mean more drama in the sense that she only had two draws and then 11 decisive games. And this is all before the tiebreak games, which are all decisive as well. You think professional chess is boring? You think women's chess is boring? Think again. I'm going to give you a sample of her tactical brilliance and then one of her end game prowess. And then I will walk you through the final rounds of the tournament to show you how Jennifer Yu took home first place, $40,000 and her second US title. This is round four. Jennifer was playing against Sophie Morris Suzuki and here she had maiden five. Pause the solve. Let's see what you got. That's right, Jennifer Yu plays knight takes g6, and you can't take with h-pawn because you're pinned, so uh, of course black plays f takes g6, but now the dynamite rook takes h7, check. If you take, then it is going to be mate in two this way. So instead, black tries to save it by playing king g8, but nope, no go, because rook takes g7, and you are in the same situation, and this is game over. In this game, Jennifer Yu shows off her in-game technique as she plays against woman grandmaster Gorok Bigum Tokir Jonova. I'm so sorry. I know I probably butchered that, but I'm trying my best. So, she's up a pawn, but how does she convert? She brings her king forward. You have to have an active king in in-games, right? This makes a lot of sense. And what she does is her opponent, right now, it's completely 0-0. But as soon as her opponent pushes g3, it's no longer 0-0. And just a tiny crack in the door. And there's this famous saying by some chess player. Please, I can't remember who it is. So if you know it, please leave a comment down below. But if you're playing a great chess player and you leave the door cracked open, they will come crashing through that door. So if you leave a little bit of a crack with G3, all of a sudden takes, takes, and uh-oh. It's uh, very tempting for this rook to try and win this F-pawn. But there's actually no way to win it because you give a check and the king moves forward. Obviously, rook c3, you're leaving the pawn hanging, but it's with check, so it's like, okay, the king moves back, but now you're actually leaving the pawn hanging because there's two different routes here. White can either take the pawn and say, I have some counterplay with a pass pawn of my own, or uh, they can give this check. And both of them don't work. <laughs> so it's basically king g4, and now uh, after a couple moves, Jennifer actually just full-blown game the pawn, but of course it is poisoned. Um, if you take that pawn, all of a sudden, uh-oh, g3. And yes, you can give this check on rook h7, but it doesn't matter because you give another check and all of a sudden the white rook, you have to leave, right? Because you can't take with the king, obviously it's supported by this pawn, and you can't take with this pawn because the rook is pinning it. So what do you do? You move your the rook away, now you lose your pawn, and it's going to be a race. Can white promote this past pawn? Or will black steamroll and roll these two connected past pawns down the board? And as you can tell, uh, white's in check, so they have to move. And they immediately lose the pawn. <laughs> and from here, it's just clean up. Check. Give another check. And all of a sudden, that pawn is running. Trying to let the rook get in, but nope. Connected past pawns. Going to win. After a couple more moves, white just resigned. Because it's very clear that this pawn is going to promote and white can't do anything about it. Absolute clean conversion. Well done by Jennifer Yu. Okay, now we slow it down a little bit. This is round 12. Jennifer Yu is leading the tournament in first place by only half a point. Irina Crush is in second place. So if I so if they draw, then Jennifer Yu stays ahead by half a point. If Irina Crush wins, then she will leapfrog Jennifer Yu. So what happens here? They play into a Bononi game, and basically uh, white has this big structure on light squares here, but then black at some point pushes e6 and says, you know, what are you going to do? I'm chipping away at the center. Uh, Jennifer just goes ahead and takes and says, I'll just really have this bind on d5. But what that allows is that black gets a great outpost square on d4 for the knight. And an outpost square is basically when you can't kick the piece off without trading it for an equal piece or more. So, for example, there's just no pawns that can push because they've already pushed themselves to c4 and e4. So the game continues. Jennifer saves her light score bishop and then tries to offer a trade of the knights. Uh, Irina Crush kind of just allows the tension to build. And then at some point, Jennifer Yu tries to create her own outpost with this knight. But Irina Crush is not as worried about trading the light square bishop off. And you'll see why in a few moments. After the knights do get traded off, 
uh, now the dark square bishop comes to this outpost square. And after king h1, uh, there's more pressure that's being built up on the f file. This dark square is very tough for the king to actually like move, right? That literally has no moves at the moment. So that's why Jennifer plays g3. Basically saying, look, you don't have a light square bishop, so how are you going to attack my king? And now at least I have relieved a little bit of the pressure on the f file uh, by protecting the bishop two different ways and giving my king a little bit more room. But once the knight jumps forward, a little bit of shuffling, a pawn's dropped. Um, okay, rook f1, queen d7, and now bishop takes e5. And here's the tricky part. Irina Crush could have easily just taken back immediately and the game is still even. But what she does instead is she gets a little bit too cute for her own good and plays rook e8, trying to pin the bishop to the queen. And what this allows for Jennifer is that she gets to play queen f3, and then after bishop takes, she can play h5. And basically say, look, I have all this pressure on the light squares. I'm breaking up your structure here. And now white has all the pressure on the F file. You see how a few moves ago, it was actually black who controlled the F file. Well, now that the F file is actually fully open, white's the one that has control. So this is a strong attack that white, that black would have to deal with. But Jennifer Yu does not find H5. Instead, she plays the most ridiculous looking Bishop A4. And what she's looking for is to deflect the queen away from the defense of the king, but it doesn't work because after queen f7 check and the king moves, the black queen is still defending the e8 square. So you can't take here and you can't go back rank mate because g6 has been played. So what do you do? White plays on with h5 now, but it is too late because now black's actually just completely fine. Um, yeah, the, the queen starts coming through with checks and yeah, there's another check. There's a check from the rook, and Jennifer Yu has to resign because you're going to either lose your queen with queen f4, or if you try to run, you're just you're just getting mated. I mean, bishop e3, all the black's pieces are working harmoniously, and the queen will re-enter with some checks, and it's going to be mate. I mean, literally the best move here by the engine is just to play queen f4 and, and just delay mate as long as possible. <laughs> so... That, that's when you know it's not a good sign. But with this win, Jennifer Yu has actually lost the grip on first place, and Irina Crush is up by half a point now. So going into the last round of the tournament, round 13, Jennifer Yu had to win on demand. And basically, if Irina Crush wins and Jennifer Yu wins, then Jennifer still finishes second place. But fortunately, Irina Crush did draw. So Jennifer Yu found herself in this position, and she had to find a way to convert this endgame. And if you look at it, she's down a pawn, but she immediately wins it back, okay? So now, how does she convert? She tries to trade off the knights, but instead her opponent gives her a check, and now Jennifer Yu starts waltzing her king forward. And an like, active king is super important in endgames, right? So now, as she trades off the knights and brings her king even closer, the rook is forced to leave, and uh-oh. Now that the rooks are connected, they are extra powerful, right? But, you know, Jennifer Yu, she does get skewered here uh, on this file to drop the H pawn, but, you know, she has other assets. Even though white has these two pass pawns, they're doubled pawns, so they're a little bit easier to pick off. But even worse for white is that these two connected pass pawns are going to be much faster. So Jennifer brings her king even further forward, attacking the white rook. The white rook goes back, but the king is just relentless. And once the rook moves... D2 comes and I'm pretty sure this is resigns and now everything's protected these rooks are just an absolute wall and D D1 is coming you're going to sacrifice the rook and then we're going to promote the other pawn so Jennifer Yu takes down Talia Cervantes Landero who was actually like gunning for first place at one point as well like she made a huge comeback at, at some point and Jennifer Yu put that on the kibosh and now Jennifer Yu is tied for first place so we go into tiebreakers. And the way that the tiebreaks work in the US Women's Chess Championship is that you have two games of rapid that are 10 minutes plus two second increment. So it's much, much faster than the classical games that they've been playing with 90 minute starting times with 30 minutes extra bonus time after 40 moves. So things are going to get crazy, right? And in game one, Jennifer was playing with the white pieces. Game two, Irina Crush will play with the white pieces so just to make sure it's fair. But basically, both players are down to 14 seconds each at this moment. So pieces, brains, everything is in overdrive mode, trying to figure out a way forward. 
So pieces are moving, and then Jennifer Yu sacrifices her rook for the dark square bishop. And why does she do this? To connect these pa two pawns. That seems odd, right? But at least she's going to win the F pawn. Now with even less time on the clock, Irina Cross just goes grabbing random pawns, but this is losing. One move and one move only. Jennifer Yu has to find rook F7, which is pretty natural because you're hitting the queen uh, with tempo, right? But after the queen moves, uh... Uh oh, the light square bishop's coming to town. And when you're under a huge attack, you try and like trade the pieces off, right? But uh, instead of trading pieces or moving the rook, why well, can just check the king? The rook has to move back, and all of a sudden, you're looking at a bunch of pins. They repeat for a couple moves, but then Jennifer Yu's like, no, I can't draw with the white pieces in the tiebreakers. This is not acceptable. So now she brings her queen forward. After queen takes f8 to try and salvage this and trade all the pieces off, Jennifer Yu finds the very simple. Maiden one, queen takes h7, gg. And this is huge because when you play with white first in the tie breaks and you get a win, all you need to do is hold a draw with black. In game two of the playoff, again, Jennifer Yu just needs a draw, right? But both players have less than 10 seconds now. It is crazy how these playoff games, even though it's rapid, 10 minutes sounds like a lot to you and me who might be playing more online than over the board. But for these players that have just been transitioning from classical to rapid, Absolutely insanity. 10 seconds is no time on the clock, especially over the board when two seconds of increment, it takes two seconds to just move the piece. So you're really not gaining time back. But here again, Jennifer Yu sacrifices the rook for the bishop. Apparently it's a thing that she's always looking for. And it's actually, it's actually fine. This is all fine until she allows the trader rooks, the bishop goes back and all of a sudden bishop h8. This is a nasty little checkmate threat from Irina Crush going in on G7. So black is forced to play F6, and then after takes and trying to force the queens off, Irina Crush goes back and just leaves the pressure there. And this queen is basically stuck uh, uh, defending here. Rook D1, Knight C6. Okay, now the bishop's coming out, but why? Well, of course the rook wants in, right? But instead, uh, the queen comes out so that the rook just harasses the queen. The queen moves again. Knight's jumping forward. The bishop offers itself. Black takes the trade, and all of a sudden, uh-oh, like, this is just a lot of pressure coming. So after queen f6, queen f7, nope, queen d8 check, king g7, rook pinning the queen to the king, and at this point, Jennifer Yu said, I've had enough, good game. That means we have to go to the final playoff game. The way that this works is that Jennifer Yu is going to be playing with the black pieces, but she is also down a full minute. She has four minutes versus Irina Crush's five minutes. And why would black have the disadvantage in time? It's because if the players draw, then black automatically wins. So you lose time odds for the huge benefit of having a draw equal a win. And oh my goodness, if you thought that there were some serious time scrambles in the 10 plus two games, then get ready for a five minute versus four minute zero increment game here. There's all sorts of craziness here, uh, which starts as early as like move nine or 10, um, actually move nine. So right here, the center gets locked. Okay, could be boring, right? Uh, how about after F4? Bishop g4. Uh, did Jennifer Yu think that this knight hadn't moved and she like pre-moved over the board? Because it seems like she just completely hallucinated. And, and that's in her own words. She was like, I hallucinated a pin on the queen. But in reality, uh, this bishop's not supported. There's no peace between the, the queen and the bishop. So Irina Crush goes up a full piece on move 10. Whoa. <laughs> that hasn't has a material advantage which should be crushing at any top chess level and also is up on the clock at this point because it's so early and she started with plus one minute. So how does Jennifer you create counterplay? Because you have to, right? You, there's no option. And, and in her interview, she even said, I blundered a bishop twice against Irina Crush. I will not let this be the reason why I lose the US Chess Championships. Amazing fighting spirit from her. So she, instead she kicks the queen out and okay, she moves her pieces, a couple trades happen. Trades are good for white, right? White's up material. When you are up in material, you want to trade down because once you trade pieces off, the more you trade, the more your, your material advantage is gonna grow into a bigger and bigger advantage. But uh, after pawn takes, knight takes, the knight jumps forward. Okay, where do we see any counterplay? By the way, uh, Jennifer Yu winning connect four here. Shout out Eric Rosen. Well done, well done. Okay, 
<laughs> we move on. The rook tries to double up on the f file, and look at this. No, no f pawns for either player, and two rooks here. I mean, at some point, could even put the queen on f3, but instead goes for a pin of her own, which could be dangerous, right? Because there's ideas of g4 and then g5 with tempo on the queen, but uh, there's nothing to be attacked here. So what what's the point, right? And uh oh, Irina sees that threat. And she's trying to boot the knight out so she can use this battering ram she's developed with all these rooks down the f file and the bishop hitting the queen with tempo but this allows some counterplay the engine still allows this but why so after knight d6 backwards move right knight trade and when arena takes she's expecting okay if queen takes knight then uh oh this rook is hanging because two attackers versus only the king defending you can't do anything about it but that's not the only option for Jennifer. She finds the very resourceful bishop takes h2. It's plus 10 for white. What is going on? Well, what's going on is that after like rook takes, uh, there's there's just nothing. There's nothing for, for black. But what Irina Crush played was king takes h2. And now this is very different because at this point, you can play queen takes d6 with check. Like this is a check on the king. And whoa, 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 what just happened? Because after the king moves, something is hanging. Something's different in the position. This rook sees this queen and uh-oh, uh, all of a sudden material is about even, right? You have a queen and a rook for two rooks and two minor pieces. And all of a sudden it's a lot harder to convert than before. But if we go back a few moves, let's just do an instant replay, right? G4, knight moves back, the knight trades itself off. So if you look at this position, you have two pieces in between. But after she traded the knight off and played bishop takes h2, this is when the queen started hanging. And that's why you cannot afford to allow this to happen with check. You win a piece with check and then eventually take the, the queen. So uh, Irina Crush is probably starting to sweat quite a bit now. Um, at some point, she made like an illegal move. So I think that added time to Jennifer Yu's clock. But it didn't matter because Irina Crush was like so low on time at some point. She was just blitzing out all these moves just like crazy. And uh, yeah, just several moves later, she just runs out the clock. Jennifer Yu finds a way to shuffle around and flag the Grandmaster Irina Crush. A 38-year-old absolute veteran, a true legend in U.S. women's chess. She was the first U.S. woman to ever get the Grandmaster title. And Jennifer Yu just casually gambits a bishop on move nine for no compensation whatsoever and takes down Irina Crush. Absolutely amazing tournament by Jennifer Yu. It wasn't as dominant as her 10 out of 11, but I bet this victory probably feels even sweeter than the last. If you want to hear more chess stories like this, let me know in the comments down below which stories of yours are your favorite, and I'll try to do some investigation and make a video on it. Hope you enjoyed. Happy learning, everyone.